you gotta get up early in the morning. It's all mucky, like. Being a farmer, I think it's kind of hard work. Just, it's fun looking after the donkeys, but cow poo, not into it. It's a cold Monday in February, and Andy Matheson, head teacher at Kelvin Grove Primary School in South London, is giving a final briefing to a year five and six group. To get to Exeter, which direction are we traveling? It's preparation for what he hopes will be a memorable week away from school. A lot of it's unseen and unplanned, and you're never quite sure. And, I, and it's that uncertainty that I really enjoy about it all. So southwest. Um, that's the, the general direction that we've got there, that's good. Just trace that route now with your finger, talk about it to your partner, okay? If you see just under the E of Exeter, there's a red road going out again in a westerly direction. The children are going to spend that week in Devon on a working farm and they will be the ones doing the work. Nethercott is run by a charity, Farms for City Children, and everyone, teachers as well as pupils, have to get their hands dirty. You'll be going down to the dairy and you'll be watching the milking, and you'll be feeding baby calves, and you'll be clearing up cow poo. <laughs> okay, there's always something to do around the farm. Once kitted out, it's time for a health and safety briefing. Ever since foot and mouth disease, all farms have had to pay strict attention to biosecurity. And farm manager Barry Searle demonstrates Nethercott's low-tech solution. You will notice that in the yard just here, we have a big tub of disinfectant. If your wellies are nice and long like mine, you can just walk in and you can walk out, OK? This is the ding-dong bell, so-called because it goes and when you hear that bell ring, it simply means go into the house as quickly as you can. With the briefing over, it's straight down to work. The children will be working in small groups for the week, with one teacher keeping an eye on each group. The first thing it's going to do is suck your hand, OK? And health and safety won't allow us to let you do that, so please refrain from putting your hands in. And, and they haven't actually worked out there's no milk in my finger. <laughs> Now each calf has around about four plates of milk every morning and every evening. Check on the on the shed that you're feeding that the number matches the number on your bucket. Okay. The first lesson on the farm is about keeping the animals happy, so the children are taught how to feed them. Giovanni and Shanice are finding it just a bit more difficult than they thought. Day two, and it's not taken long for the children to get to grips with the daily routine on the farm, including understanding their responsibility for the animals' welfare. It's actually grass. Okay? We cut it in the summer and we put it into a big pit. Feeding silage to the dairy herd can be a bit of a smelly job. Basically, spread it all along the line. I'll try and get these cows out and then I'll, I'll come and help you. Yourself. Because after breakfast, we've got probably the hardest but the best job on the farm. You really want to know what it is, or should yeah. we leave it as a surprise? Okay. If 40 cows produce half a ton of poo a day, we have 100. How many tons of poo do our cows produce roughly? Now there's a novel way of contextualising key stage two maths for the children to ponder over breakfast. And we're hoping to get back here by about quarter past 11, 
But some of you are quite big. I reckon we'd get here by 11, won't we? Yeah. Let's see if we can set a record for the rest of the week. Let's go. I just want to get ready. Children are the huge part of this place. They're the soul of the place, really. For them, it's um, a huge adventure, I think, coming from where they do to the countryside. They, they just love it. Oh, oh, this way. Absolutely. We've all got stepping in here. They suddenly realise, I've got to do it. They see their friends doing it. Develops their teamwork. <laughs> and they all get stuck in. By the end of the week, they're loving it. OK, ready? Let's go. <laughs> At Nethercock, children don't learn about just the theory of recycling, they put it into practice. <laughs> Halfway through the week, and the children are already drawing their own conclusions about life in the country. With the land it comes with, um, you've got to get up early in the morning, you've got to like, clean up all the, horse, all the horse poo and all sorts. It's all mucky, like. But when you go in, it's nice, but to have a house here, yeah, I'd rather have a house here yeah, with servants to do all this work. <laughs> you got to kill things here, yeah, and it's not really nice like, to kill stuff, because it, it won't make you feel right knowing that you have to eat something that you've killed. You're an animal murderer. <laughs> a lot of smiles and a lot of laughs today. It's been good. A lot of shaking of heads to begin with, but really now they're all getting the point of it, I think. And uh, hopefully they'll sleep tonight. That's all I'm worried about. <laughs> After another long working day, it's time to put the health and safety session into practice. <laughs> Devon has been farmed for centuries, and the children hear firsthand about the old ways from retired farmer Tom Farley. Now, what do you think that is used for? And don't say whacking cows, because if you hit a cow with that, you'd probably knock it out. Bit of a walking stick, bit short for that. Now, if you look at it closely, it's shiny at both ends, so that means it's been held at both ends, so it's made to lift something. But what? Yes? Like, when, a ca when like, a probably, a, a, like, a sheep's born, you get the rope. No, nope, it's not used with animals. You've got to think about harvest time. Do you know what happens at harvest time on a farm? I want you to kneel down there, please, and face the others. And I'll need one of the teachers, please, to help me with this. I don't mind who. Up, sit up straight, please. Kneel up straight. That's it. And from now on, don't move. You're a sack of wheat. If you take that in your right hand, please. Your left hand goes on top of the sack and grips it. Don't mind her hair. <laughs> lower the pole right down. Right down. Low, 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 low. Lean the sack back and lift. And up comes the sack. <laughs> it's called a granny. Now, why it's called a granny, I'm not quite sure. Sometimes you get a child here that the teachers say are not very good back at school. But when they get here, they suddenly find something they can do. And they get surprised. The teachers are really surprised by certain children that back at school, they're a problem. But here, they suddenly find something that interests them. And they're a different child. Another day, and at the crack of dawn, one group finds itself down in the milking parlour. A few of them are a little bit low this morning, but it's the middle day. They'll probably pull themselves out of that and, and, and get going again. But they've been remarkable. And, and when they get the bit between their teeth, there's a sort of sense of pride that suddenly comes out in wanting to complete the task. Okay, so when you see the male, Thank you. For it to hatch out into a chick. They learn to live together with other friends and they learn about things that really matter a lot to people, but things that they really aren't taught about much these days. Just living, the environment, the development of their food and the provision of it, all sorts of things. There is no end to the list, really. You got it, Harry, have you? Yeah. 
I love the straw in your hat as well. Many of the children who come to the farm have very little idea about where their food comes from. But by the end of the week, all of that has changed. This is your last time in here, Dean. Probably the next time you see these animals will be in Tesco or Sainsbury's or wherever you go. <laughs> Stop for a second. And there you go. Jobs are rotated throughout the week, so that by the end of it, all the groups have had a go at most tasks. But on a farm, you never really know what's going to happen next. And although this group doesn't know it yet, they're about to witness something you don't see every day. I'm not overconfident of the outcome. Mm. See the back legs? Well, maybe you can, maybe. Yeah. There's the tail. I've got to be quite quick now. I can't. I've got to give it a little shake to get the fluid out of its lungs. All right, girl. I just want to see if you've got another. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Yeah, I've got to do it, guys. Whew. Come on, girl. Another one. That was nice before breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> well, guys, you got a grandstand view of all that? Breakfast on the last day, and then there's still one more job to do before it's time to say goodbye and begin the long journey back to London. Shake it against on the side, of it, in you get. Empty your bags out. Shake and spread. Farming is kind of hard work. The farmers have to wake up about five or six o'clock to, to get ready to, to get check their animals. To, like, if you're working for Nevercock, you have to, you have to come here about seven thirty, pick them up, go back, do your normal stuff, come back. It's hard work. When you work in teams, you get to work with your friends in your group. Get the next, next food. Brilliant. Well done, team. I like it a lot better here. It's a lot calmer. There's hardly any sirens. You have to, you know, think about the wildlife more than you do in London because people in London just like litter all over the place. But here, you just can't. You have to pick it up. It's not about necessarily ever wanting to be a farmer, but at least they'll go away understanding where the food that's put in front of them comes from and how it's produced and the hard grind that goes in behind it. We've had a good week. Hard working week. The weather's been a little bit cold, but we seem to have been able to battle through that. Now it's time to go home, but not everyone is looking forward to it. I have to sit down and learn at a table instead of actually doing it yourself. I'm looking after the donkeys, but cow poop, not into it. 